This one has definitely been the most requested mini PC review on the channel, with plenty of hype behind it. B-Link has released some pretty good mini PCs lately, so I was also keen on checking out their Sir6 Pro, which features the Ryzen 6800H CPU with Radeon 680M graphics. Does this one hold up against the competition? That's what we're going to find out. I bought the Sir6 Pro from the official B-Link website. Unfortunately, there's no option for a barebones unit, so I had to buy the only pre-build available, which comes with 32GB of DDR5 memory and a 500GB Gen 4 NVMe drive for US$659. A cheaper 16GB option would have been nice, but as it is, it's still quite a bit cheaper than the competition from both Morphine and Mini's forum, even if the UM690 comes with a 6900HX. Let's get it out of the way first. The Sir6 Pro has a weird look to it, with the ocean coloured metal case, red power button and fabric top. The majority of the time, products look better in reality than they do in stock photos, but this? Well this one looks worse, but at least it's not plastic like the UM690, and what's more important is how the Sir6 Pro performs. Inside the box you'll find a replaceable top cover, manual, two HDMI cables, one short, and a longer one, screws, monitor mount, and power supply. I'll just add that replaceable extra parts are definitely not my thing. It always adds to the cost and just seems wasteful, but I'm sure someone will think it's awesome. Anyway, on the front, there's a clear CMOS button, two 10 gigabit USB 3 ports, a USB 4 Type-C, audio jack, and power button. On the back, there's 2.5 gigabit LAN, a USB 2, another 10 gigabit USB 3, dual HDMI supporting 4K 60Hz, and the barrel jack power input. Now, this is another mini PC where the screws are easily accessible. And doesn't that just warm the cockles of my cold, dead heart? After the four screws are out, there's a piece of rubber to pull on. Awesome. Inside is what we've seen with the B-Link intel base C12 mini PC, which is a fan for cooling the SSD. There's also space for a 2.5 inch storage drive if you need it. Let's take a look underneath. Two screws need to be removed to lift the SATA connector. Then more screws holding the SSD cooler in place. Keep track of the screws, they aren't all the same size. Okay, once we lift that, there's the crucial P3 Plus NVMe drive with a thermal pad, which actually connects to the plastic SSD cooler section. The fan likely has a positive effect on the included crucial DDR5 RAM as well. Underneath the NVMe drive is an M.2 Wi-Fi card. CMOS battery is here as well. To get to the CPU cooler, the screws holding the board in place need to be removed. Also, detach the SSD cooler. Watch out for the Wi-Fi pigtail cables and gently pull out the board. The rubber power button will fall out and needs to be put back on reassembly. And there she is, a nice sizable fan. A couple more screws and we have two copper heat pipes leading into the heatsink. Compare that to the i3 NUC, which has been downgraded to just one heat pipe. Sad. Reassembling the Sir6 Pro is a bit more difficult but overall, this unit is moderately easy to open. Apart from a screwdriver, no extra tools are needed. Windows 11 Pro is included, but I tested Ubuntu off a USB stick. Everything apart from audio worked fine. Should be okay with an install and driver update. For the benchmarks, we're going to see how the 6800H holds up against the 6900HX and the previous 5800H to see the generational improvement. In single core Cinebench, the B-Link was ahead of the 5800H by 7%, and it was behind the 6900HX by just 1%. In multi-core, the 6800H is ahead by less than 1%, and it was behind the 6900HX by 8% in multi-core. That didn't seem to matter in the handbrake encoding test, where the results were identical. But the generational improvement was 13%. The crucial P3 Plus has great read speeds, and the write isn't too bad either. It is a DRAM-less drive, so it will start to slow down when writing large files consecutively to the SSD. In 3 d Mark DX11, the B-Link was consistently ahead of all the other mini PCs, and it's a 3% improvement against the 6900HX comparison I'm using. Generational improvement was a very large 62%. In DX12, 
The B-Link was ahead of the Morphine 6900HX unit tested by just under 2%. The generational increase was a whopping 71%. You might be wondering why I didn't compare against the Mini's Forum UM690, which has higher scores. That's because in actual gaming, the unit throttled performance after heating up, so it's not reliable. And speaking of unreliable, so is 3D Mark, as you'll soon see with the game comparisons. Since I don't have 5800H footage for everything, I'm including the 6600U instead, which performs pretty close to it. Forza Horizon 5 is a game where the new RDNA 2 graphics really shine, with a 100% increase over the 6600U. The 6800H is slightly behind the 6900HX, around 3%. In Doom Eternal, there's another doubling of frame rate, and both the 6800H and 6900HX perform very similarly. In Elden Ring, the performance, again, is pretty similar between the top two units. For Cyberpunk 2077, the 6900HX is slightly faster. In God of War, the 6800H actually came out on top. With emulation, the 6800H is in the middle. Each step up is around 10% better performance. For PS3 emulation, the 6900HX is clearly ahead in every title. but the 6800H holds up really well. However, it isn't faster in actual games like 3D Mark would lead us to believe. In the BIOS, you can set how much memory is dedicated to the integrated graphics. On this mini, it's set to 3GB by default. There's also an option to set the target memory speed. But unfortunately, just like the 6600U, changing the option does nothing, which makes me suspect maybe memory overclocking is only available with the HX chips. I also tested an eGPU on the USB 4 port and prepared myself for frustration. However, the Sir 6 Pro had the least issues so far. The eGPU was detected no problem. I used the display output on the mini PC to install the Nvidia driver. However, booting with the display cable in the eGPU results in a black screen when Windows loads. The only way I got it to work was to boot with the HDMI connected to the mini PC first, then switch over to the Razer Core X after Windows 11 has loaded. Why this stuff still hasn't been sorted out after all this time is beyond me, but a viewer did mention one solution is to buy a dummy HDMI plug for the mini PC, which acts as if you're connected to a monitor there. That should fix the black screen problem when booting with an eGPU. The cooling used for the B-Link Sir 6 Pro holds up decently with a maximum temp of 89C. I also did the 20 minute game test to make sure there were no heat related issues when using it for a longer period of time, and the B-Link had no change in frame rate. Only the Minis Forum UM690 has failed out of the high-end Ryzen 6000 Minis I've tested so far. With active cooling on the NVMe drive, the Sir 6 Pro sure did well. Even though the thermal pad only connects to plastic, this mini PC has the lowest NVMe controller temperature so far. That little fan sure does help. Noise levels aren't bad at all either. It's even quieter than the i3 NUC12 Pro. Intel really needs to step up the game in the noise department. At 7 watts idle power draw, the Sir 6 was the winner in this list. Still, that was less interesting compared to the max power draw. It never went above 75 watts. 
which is practically the same as the Morphine 6600U, and is far below the 6900HX, which maxed out at 98 and 101 watts, depending on the brand. For gaming performance efficiency, the 6800H is the winning chip. Okay, so let's summarize the pros and cons of the B-Link Sur 6 Pro. Performance is good, and close to a 6900HX. The case is made out of metal, always a plus in my book. The included memory and storage aren't the cheapest and nastiest out there. The Mini has great power to performance efficiency. It has the best NVMe cooling on a Ryzen Mini PC, but it's only available in a pre-built option. The Sur 6 is a weird looking device, and I think it's B-Link's least likable so far. For some, the aesthetics are a non-issue, and that's perfectly fine. There's also a lack of USB ports, and ports in general. Memory overclocking doesn't work, and should have been removed from the BIOS. Overall, it's pretty good. It gets most of the essentials right. The B-Link Sur 6 Pro is one Ryzen 6000 series unit I've reviewed that I actually recommend. The price is reasonable for what you get. And so, B-Link shows how they managed to take a spot in my top five mini PCs of 2022, which you should definitely check out right here. Cheers.